Wow. I don't want to break that mood. <laughs> good morning, church. Good morning. It is good to be in worship with you this morning, and what a beautiful turnout on this holiday weekend. So many here and so many visitors. We welcome you, especially nice to see the Thompsons back. Nice to have you back. Um, and, and some new folks here. You are all welcome. If you would find that red attendance registration booklet and sign that and pass that on, um, I know that'll make Mary Williams very happy so she can track the attendance for us. So. Um, Let's see, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, um, we have the service of remembrance at the Indian Mission Cemetery. And that is, uh, if you go out 41 to King's Corner and turn left, you go about three quarters of a mile to Indian Road, and then back in another mile, and it's kind of a dirt road, so take it easy. Um, and, and the cemetery is there, it's just beautiful. And the service will be at 11 and Avery's going to be playing taps for us, right? So um, we'll have a potluck afterwards at the church. That's always a lot of fun. Native people and that church in particular really love to cook. So we, um, and they're Methodists too. So you know that's just frosting on the cake. Um, all right. Um, oh, I forgot to welcome everybody who's worshiping at home. So we're glad that you've joined us too, and please give us a thumbs up and a like, and let us know that you are here. Add your name to the list of faithful who come to worship online. Um, I will be out most of the week. Um, at the annual conference is this week over in Traverse City. I know, oh, I've got to go to Traverse City, yeah. <laughs> And, and Jeff and Bob are going too, and um, we are uh, going to be uh, tackling some of the, the legislation, although this year the legislation seems like it's so light and airy based on the several, the 20 years past of, of legislation that's been more divisive. So I'm excited to be able to go to conference, and it's a little shorter this year, which is nice too, so I'll be back on Saturday afternoon. But I won't be available for um, chats and drop-ins and you know visits. So um, if you've got a concern, please let us know, and um, I will I will attend to that. So, pardon me. Oh, thank you, thank you. Safe travels. Yes. So so as we are all traveling on the holiday weekend, I I pray for for safety as we travel. So. Um, any other announcements that we'd like to share? Did, or, no, I looked down here and I saw this name. It's Jeff. He has an announcement for us. Actually, a couple. Um, yesterday, we had our Holy Spokes bike ride, and even though Noah and Moses couldn't get their act together, they did it just to find, and the, the rain stopped mm -hmm. when the ride started. Mm -hmm. um, and we only had one, one flat tire and one uh, wrong way Corrigan direction problem. It's, it's this, the same, the usual suspects. <laughs> that was cruel. They would love to tell you that story after church. Um, we raised, uh, I haven't done a final total yet because I don't know, but we raised over $1,000 for the youth group. Wonderful. So, well done. Well done, all my volunteers who stood at corners for for two hours, you know, this and that and the other thing. Um, we also have the, the men's group is coming up with the grilled steak dinner uh, on Saturday night before Father's Day. Uh, so we still have these tickets and it is by reservation only because we're buying steak. It's not like spaghetti that we can just throw in and reuse it some other time. So if you want one of these tickets, they're in the office or see me after church. It's $35 a couple, $20 a person, $5 for kids under 12. It is a top sirloin steak dinner. It's not gonna be, you know, just some cheap piece of chuck roast. So, <laughs> come on down. Right. Good. In the bulletin you will find the offering invitation for the Peace with Justice Sunday. Today is Peace with Justice, and um, it's also Trinity, which is what we will be, not my cat Trinity, but Trinity Sunday, okay? Um, the peace with justice means this, this supports anything that is anti-racism, anti-bias, um, in, inclusion um, types of ministries. So if you are able to give to that, please put that in the offering um, box with your name on the envelope so that we can track that uh, or get, you can get credit for it. Um, 
The other thing is, this is a rotary announcement, is that the Bandshell uh, concerts on the beach, um, the Thursday night um, concerts, there's little mini schedules out there on the table, so if you want to grab one. Um, and, and if we run out up here, there's some downstairs too. So, so pretty cool. Some of our, our uh, several of our band members from the Peace Tones will be performing through that, throughout the summer. So let's come to support, okay? And I think that's it. All right, let's stand for the greeting of the collective. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let's center our thoughts. God comes to me as my creator, my redeemer, and my sustainer. I need every relationship with my Lord. And a favorite to start our service today, number 64. Holy, holy, holy. Methodist sing. Please be seated. Good job, <coughs> Wonderful. Let's join our voices in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Sovereign of the universe, we proclaim your splendor and majesty. You are the Holy One. You are full of glory. You speak and the oaks whirl and the cedars fall. In your presence, we stand in awe and humility with boldness and courage. We look and listen for your presence here today. Amen. <coughs> what a busy week. Uh, Lori Walker um, ha is, has got her appointment with her oncologist a week from, my, um, from tomorrow, so she's excited about that to know the path that she's going to be taking going forward. Um, Janice Wilbur, I do not have an update on Janice uh, that she was having strokes and, um, and was down in the hospital, so I'm not sure if any, you do, Cindy? 
Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. So she's home. Praise God. Um, Kelly? We're waiting for another appointment. Waiting for another appointment, okay. Mary Reitler, what her test for her cancer is positive, so she does have bladder cancer. And so she is really coveting everyone's prayers, and she has an appointment also in the coming days to get a path going for her. Uh, Sharon moved. She's she's back here in Oscoda, right? Yep. Yippee! Yeah. So so honestly, <laughs> Jeff is really glad that the trips to the, to Saginaw and and Jolene that they're not running back and forth to Saginaw waving at each other on the way. So um, John Bartsoff is, as you know, in end of life hospice care. Uh, but he is not allowing any grass to grow, okay? He is taking every day and living it as fully as he's, his physical abilities allow. They're going up to Mackinac Island, so he wants to, to go and see the bridge one more time. So um, please pray for the Bartsoff family as they make these transitions. Um, Ray is um, settling in at Iosco Medical Care Facility. Um, and I think the, um, those are all the updates I have on those folks. We want to celebrate that Dick Flora will be 96 on Tuesday. And Belle has brought him to our attention. So. I think we should. Yes. Can we start that a little bit lower? Okay, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dick. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and we're so glad that you came to celebrate your birthday with us and to celebrate loving the Lord. Uh, let's see, anything else? Yeah, 34 years married to that beautiful woman in the balcony. <laughs> oh, woo -hoo. We love anniversaries. We love marriages that have the thrilling pace that you and Jolene do. So <laughs> congratulations to you both. And Sandy is going on a trip. She's going to the East Coast to do uh, Northeast and around. And so she's asking for travel mercies for her. Um, and if I have forgotten somebody, because sometimes People drop something in my ear right before I walk in and I can't remember it all, so. But all right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Creator God, Christ our Redeemer, Spirit Sustainer, on this Trinity Sunday we seek to understand the very nature of God, and we are humbled. We are humbled that you have given us this access to the most powerful force in the universe and given us just enough to understand in our own perspective. So God, we ask you to open our hearts, open our minds, and open ourselves to receive the wisdom that you have for us today. We come to church and lay down all of the, the sin, the burden, the, everything that we lug around and carry around, the grudges, everything, Lord, we're just gonna dump that at the door. And we just want to come in here cleansed, open, ready to receive your blessing. We pray, Lord, today for, for Lori and Janice, for Kelly and Mary, for Sharon and Ray, for all those who are seeking treatment for medical reasons and for 
for hope to be in their life. We pray for John Bartsoff and the Bartsoff family. And we celebrate with Dick for life, life that is well lived and continues to honor you. Lord, we lift the people in Iowa and the places where there have been storms. We lift the people in Haiti and the violence there, the families of those missionaries who were killed. Holy and loving Lord, we thank you for all the goodness that you pour into us and the, the mercy and grace that you continue to give to us even though we turn away. So with our hearts as one and our voices as one, we praise you in the words that your Son gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. kids. I have Carter, but I need other kids. Okay. <laughs>
just come, don't they? Yes. Macy, you're still kind of a kid, aren't you? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. All right, first of all, I want to re remind you that back in the early, like in March, I think, you guys planted some seeds in little pots. Do you remember that? So they're over there. So um, they haven't really gone as far as I was hoping that they would, but I should have probably transplanted them sooner than I did. So your names are on the bottom, and some of you went crazy with how many you planted. Some of them didn't make it, but yours did. You had two, and your brother has one, and you have two. I don't know if any of yours made it. <laughs> but there are, some that there are some that didn't have a name on them, and they're the ones right by the, the flowers in the middle, so you can take those, okay? <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to talk about relationships. Okay, so Carter, tell me who that is right there. My grandma. Okay, so if that's your grandma, that makes you her grandson. Got it? Okay, and Devin is your what? brother. Okay, and Josie, who is that? Any of them. That's such your family, right? Yeah, it's my sister and my grandma and my great-grandma. Okay, so that makes you what? Their granddaughter, great-granddaughter, and sister. Okay. All right, and how about, how about you guys? You guys are sisters. sisters. You're also mother and duckling. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> that was such a cute show. Okay, um... But you're also other things. What are some other labels that you put on you? Well, let's say labels. What are some other ways that you are known? You are a friend. Student. You are a student. Athlete. Athlete. Good one. Musicians. Yes. Yes. Your mother would die if you did not say that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So musicians, um, are, you a, are you on any sports teams? So you're a teammate too, right? Okay, sometimes you are the encourager. Sometimes you are the helper, right? Sometimes, let's see if we got, um, you're, you, are, you are a member of this church because you went through confirmation, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes you help other students with their work, so that makes you a tutor, okay? All right. So, so there are, there are, but you, you are still Maya and Avery and Josie and Carter, right? Mm -hmm. And we understand that. When we talk about God, though, hmm, it is hard to understand how God can be creator of the universe, uh, Jesus our Redeemer, Savior, you know, and the Holy Spirit. Because they're all very different. But the thing about all of these relationships that we talked about, when you talk to your grandma, you talk to her very differently than you speak with your sister. When you talk with each other, that's probably pretty different than the way you talk with your mom, right? But, or your friends, right? But you have a unique relationship with each one, and for each person, you go to that person with certain things certain questions, certain things you want to talk about. And that works with God, too. Sometimes we want to talk about the whole universe. Sometimes we just need somebody who, who gets us. And sometimes we just are, are so empty, we just need to be filled. So that's why God has come to us in a variety of ways. But it's still God, right? You will hear all of this again. Don't worry if you didn't get it the first time, okay? So, all right, let's stand up and have a prayer. Oh, good. Don't forget to come back and get your flowers or your plants after church, okay? All right. Loving God. Loving God. We don't understand. We don't understand. But we accept. But we accept. That you love us. That you love us. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. We don't have a teacher.
We're not having Sunday school today, Carter, so you get to stay in here, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll make it fun, okay? <laughs> Our next hymn is God Has Spoken by the Prophets, number 108. This is a real good energizing hymn, so let's stand up. <laughs> be seated. So before we look at the scripture from Isaiah today, I want to share a little context about what is happening so that you kind of have a grasp on this, these verses. This chapter and the three chapters that follow chapter 6, they feel like they've just kind of been dropped into the middle of Isaiah's series of prophecies. These chapters are called vocational reports. They serve to validate a prophet's standing with God. See, prophets' authority to speak in the name of the Lord was often questioned by people. That still happens today, believe it or not, especially when the message wasn't so great, like maybe corrective in its content. And think back on the Old Testament, the whole thing is corrective in its content. So this passage is an account of Isaiah's vision and the interactions he had in his vision with a heavenly council of winged seraphs, seraphim, and with God. And those visions were received by the prophets through communication directly with God. God's voice spoke directly or through dreams or through some other object. So let's look now at Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, and with two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, 
For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet I have seen, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know you think that I just work on Sundays, but I do have a habit of planning out the worship services for the season ahead, and that's usually for three to four months ahead. <laughs> so every pastor does this differently, but I really like to have a, a long-range plan. Advanced planning allows our musicians to select music and <coughs> prepare things that, that support the theme and the scripture each week. And planning also helps me identify when we're going to need extra supports or extra extra volunteers to help with the worship. My plan will include a theme, a scriptural focus, hymn selections, and usually a sermon title. And you see where it's penciled in there? It's because I do all of this, but then Bill Rudolph sends me the songs for the contemporary service the week before. So I, I write those in. But planning like this can take several days. Sometimes we will follow the lectionary text. Other times I will create relevant sermon series that will be helpful to address current needs or concerns in our congregation. Sometimes it's just fun to throw in something different like Christmas in July, which we will be celebrating this summer. Sometimes I fall in line with the liturgical theology presented by the world planning experts of the Christian church worldwide, like this week, which is the recognition of the Holy Trinity. Now, I am not sure which biblical scholar decided that the verses from Isaiah chapter 6 are an awesome fit for understanding the Holy Trinity. Because the way I read it, it's kind of not, okay? But I could have selected something easier. But friends, I have made a commitment to myself and to you to deepen our understanding of the scriptures. So I intentionally will choose some harder texts. And isn't it great that you get to come along with me on that, that kind of commitment, right? <laughs> Say, yeah. yeah. There is no doctrine in the Bible that reflects the nature of the Trinity. However, the reality of God, Christ, and Spirit, we, we find that all through the New Testament. There are only four New Testament references to the threefold formula of Father, Son, and Spirit. But it was much later in our faith understanding at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD that the Trinity was canonized. And that was 1,100 years after King Uzziah died. I mean, let's face it. The idea of the Trinity is notoriously hard to understand. It is our human attempt to explain who the Christian church knows God to be based on scripture. But what's critical for us to understand, and if this is the only thing you listen to today, listen to this. God, the God who spoke to Isaiah and the other prophets is the same God who created fish and bread for thousands, and the same God who breathed faith into the apostles at Pentecost, and the same God who we have relationship with today. This text begins with the end of the era of King Uzziah, who ruled Judah for 52 years. That's a long time. And it was a period of growth and prosperity. But Uzziah forgot that he was an earthly king. And in his arrogance, he challenged God. Oops. He lost. He was also afflicted with leprosy. The people knowing this reference to Uzziah would know that the king did not honor God. And because of his challenge, Uzziah is dead. And if there's a lesson that we can learn from Uzziah, it's simply that God is holy. People, even kings, not holy. 
In his vision, Isaiah, Isaiah sees the Lord on the throne, and it's surrounded by awe and terror. So imagine, so he's envisioning this in the temple. So here's God, and the robe is all over, okay? The prophet is summoned and realizes his own unworthiness. Here Isaiah represents the children of Israel also realizing their own unworthiness. Neither Isaiah nor Israel is worthy to stand before God, and yet here Isaiah is <coughs> before the heavenly council. Seraphim who cloak themselves with their wings because not even spiritual and supernatural beings guarding and attending the throne can look upon God without being covered. Isaiah realizes that just like Uzziah, he has fallen short. Israel has fallen short. God is holy and people are sinners. Isaiah lived with sinners. We live with sinners. We live in sinful times. It was true in 740 BC and guess what, you know it's still true in 2024. And I know, I remind us about that human flaw of sin pretty regularly because we think we're going along and we're not that bad, but our opinion may be just a tad inflated. There's nothing like an encounter with God to bring us to our knees. What we learn from Isaiah here and what we learn from Christ is that forgiveness is possible. For Isaiah and his admission of having lost his way, it leads him to his con him confess his reliance and need for God. Woe is me. And through divine intervention and some visionary pain, you know, Isaiah is made clean and is able to answer God's call to serve. Here I am. In all of this, we see Isaiah understanding God and honoring God in different ways. So this is where we get out our garden tools to dig out our Trinitarian theology. So to simplify this, I want us to think about how we relate to another person. Maybe it's a sibling or a spouse. Maybe it's a friend. For this example, I would like for you to think of someone who you feel more equal to in terms of authority. So let's just think about that person, get that person in your head. When something wonderful happens, you want to tell that person about it. You want that person to celebrate with you. I accomplished something. My team won. I lost 10 pounds. I got a raise. The kind of response you are looking for is that the other person would share our joy and complement our achievement. We want our person to be a certain way with us, to reflect back our own excitement. And then another time when things are not so great, maybe we share some bad news, or we cause something to happen that is not happy. I messed up. I lost an opportunity, I didn't do something, or I did do something, or I caused pain. You know, maybe we're not as quick to share that kind of information. We might think of a different person that we would want to talk to instead of our cheerleader. And some, that, that could be very likely. If we do share our defeats, we look for a different response. In this case, if we talk about it at all, we look for someone who will be compassionate and understanding, a person who will listen and help us sort out our feelings without judging us. Oh, we do this instinctively when we're a child. If you break something, you always go to the parent you have the better relationship with. <laughs> then there are those times when we are lost. We are lonely. We are discouraged. Just insert whatever emotion you may encounter from day to day. How do we navigate those paths of life? If we reach out at all, we will turn to a trusted person, sometimes persons, to help us. We understand that one person is not always the best resource for us depending on our emotions or our needs. It takes a village for all of us. We need a circle, a tribe, a clouder, 
different friends with different gifts to guide us and support us and nurture us. Which you know it's oversimplified, this example. But I like simple. Simple usually works. Aren't we glad that we have a God who wants to relate with us on so many levels? As much as God is loving and caring and compassionate, you know there are a number of Old Testament stories in which our awesome God is fairly stern. I mean, let's just say it, God has an eye for justice and accountability. And Creator God is immense. Creator's robe fills the temple. Creator is completely and divinely other, a, a, a separate category all by himself, uniquely worthy of eternal adoration, glory, and praise. Words that we have are just insufficient. And we do try to honor God's awesomeness in the way that we worship. In our worship services, really, since the worship services going all the way back to the very beginning, people would gather to praise God, to pray and confess sin, to seek forgiveness, to share scripture, to look at the word of God and ask for discernment in understanding. Today we do this with times of silence, with spoken words, with songs, with clapping, with dancing, and we leave with a charge to abide in the word and a blessing that we can share with others. The way we interact with Creator God here in our worship matters just as it matters in the courts of heaven. That's our pattern for relating to God. But I will tell you that I have often felt intimidated by the enormity of Creator God. This reminder from Isaiah that we can and do stand before God to praise, to confess, to repent, and to give thanks for mercy, you know, that's a little slice of hope. Yet I am far more comfortable in my prayers talking to Jesus. Still God, still loving and caring, still amazing and awesome. But God is a human who lived the same range of human emotions and who understands my limited capacity for understanding and expression. It's far, far easier for me to talk to Jesus and to pray to Jesus. And then when I am completely unraveled and lost and in need of hope, that's when the Holy Spirit is my confidant. The Spirit who's already in me who already knows me and knows what I am thinking and feeling. Still God, still loving and caring, still amazing and awesome, and with me with every breath. For Isaiah, reconciliation with God came through a hot coal and a, a question from God, who will go for us? Us. Who will go for creator, redeemer, and sustainer? God is both one and not one at the same time. God, the one in many, is asking us to answer that call as well. Who will go for us? And Isaiah answers, here I am, send me. The God of Isaiah is the God of the Christian church in the whole sweep of its historical development. God did not become the Trinity at Nicaea. The Nicene Council simply affirmed what had always been true. <coughs> but it was from that council that we have the Nicene Creed. We don't say that very often in church. So to solidify our understanding, I want us to close this time today by turning to number 880 in the hymnal. It will also be on the screen. And we'll say together the creed, which very clearly spells out the Trinitarian nature of our one God. So I'm going to wait for that phone to end. Okay. So will you join me in the Nicene Creed? 
And when we get to the word in the book, if you're reading from the book, if we get to the word where it says one holy Catholic, we're going to say one holy universal church because that's what, that's what that means. So let's begin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You see, almost this entire statement is a description of our understanding of the Trinity. And yes, there are a couple of statements which separate us as Christians in baptism and resurrection. But what we have here is a blueprint. Not that it's going to make understanding the Trinity any easier for us. But it's a place for us to start. To have a relationship with each person of God. Amen. Yeah. In the bulletin, there is the project update on our, um, on our flooring and so forth. And I think that's an error. I think we passed our goal for the flooring this week, yeah, did we not? Yes. Yeah, this has not been updated since last week. Okay, so we, we, have com we have funded the flooring. We have funded our security system, which is going to be installed next week. We're going to add some more cameras and some other things. Um, but we're still working on the showers. So if you are able to contribute to that and support our shower ministry, that would be wonderful. And in addition to all of the other th wonderful things that we do in ministry here through our general fund. So let's stand and dedicate ourselves and our gifts to God. join me in our offering prayer. Loving God, like Isaiah, we are humbled by your overwhelming presence. We are grateful for glimpsing your glory. In stewardship, may our generosity reflect gratitude for your blessings. Guide us in discipleship, knowing and serving you. With every gift, we express our commitment to follow your call. Amen. And in honor of our Memorial Day weekend, we will close with Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 717.
Let's join our voices in our statement of faith in action. The one God of infinite love calls me in multiple and mysterious ways to praise and to serve. I can't explain the Trinity. It's something we each have to go into our hearts and souls and figure out ourselves. What is our relationship with Creator? What is our relationship with Christ? What is our relationship with the Spirit? But it's there for us to take. Go in peace. Live in the Trinity. Amen. Amen. One heart, one spirit, one voice to praise you. We are the body of Christ. One goal, one vision to see. Thank you.